are minimalists. I remember that Josh mentioned in the previous episode that it's important to have a partner with a similar sex drive or libido. Even if you have a partner with an aligned sex drive, how can one apply minimalism to either increase or decrease the sex that is going on in your relationship? So in the past, I think I've mentioned that my wife and I have similar sex drives and that's really good for our relationship. I'm certainly not um, mapping that onto every relationship. I'm sure there are some relationships in which there are radically different sex drives, although I think that could probably cause some tension. So can we talk about libido's role in a relationship? And I think maybe that's leading to all some of these porn problems that we're having where one person may have an appreciably different libido from their partner. Yeah, I think some of it starts from comfort where you become a little bit complacent and then maybe a little bit lazy, right? And then you have to roll that back in and say to yourself, oh, I remember how excited I was when we first moved in together and I knew we could have sex whenever we wanted as opposed to when we went on our date on Friday or Saturday night, right? right. Having those thoughts in your mind and reminding yourself of that excitement and, and kind of finding that way to spark that mm. and connect that without being too intrusive, right? Mm-hmm. Because sometimes someone gets home, they're exhausted, you're not in sync, but one of you is ready and the other isn't. Mm. Setting that stage, how do people set that stage? I tell a lot of my guy friends, if your girl's working late and you're afraid that this might be a night where it doesn't happen, make sure you like tidy up the place before she gets home. Do little things so that when she gets home, her mind has less weight mm. and she is free. And also she's turned on by that. She's mm. excited by that. She was driving home thinking about all these little chores she was going to do. Now she doesn't. Right. Now here you are. Can be a simple candle. Can be... You know, as a wedding gift, I always buy the bride and the groom a cologne and a perfume that I tell them to never wear anywhere except they wear it on their wedding day and then they wear it at home on special, like as a as a scent trigger uh-huh. of like, let's get at it tonight. That's you know cool. what I mean? Oh, I love that. Don't wear it on a regular thing. Don't wear it on a date to go out to dinner only in your home. Yeah, that's so good. And that scent reminds you of that day. Yeah. Well, I think too, like he's at, he asked, how can minimalism help you have more sex in, the, in, in your relationship? Um, going back to, you know, we're just trying to help people find a middle ground. Yeah. So, uh, help, going to your partner, going to your, uh, wife or husband or whatever and saying, Hey, look, um, here is my values when it is, when it comes to sex, here are my desires. And you start that conversation and see exactly how maybe you two can get on the same page. Now, maybe one partner does have a higher libido than the other. So then the question is, is go out of your, you know, how, how can you go out of your way to show your partner that you want to do everything that you can for them to make them be uh, in, in a sexual mood. I know like with 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 my partner, like I will um, ask her, you know, hey, wh- what, wh- what can I do for you? I don't like talking about our sex life too much, like, but, yeah. but this is an appropriate time, I guess, to talk about mm-hmm. it. But, uh, you know, it'll be something like, she'd be like, you know, I really want you to like pick out a nice pair of shorts for me. <laughs> or uh, or or a nice a nice like lingerie thing for me uh-huh. or um hey let's pick out a sex toy together uh-huh. and like those things uh, I pay attention to um, if I didn't ask her I wouldn't know to do that thing so so well, let's talk let's talk a bit about libido and and its role in a, a good relationship a healthy relationship with a partner um, I think sometimes. It's one of those weird things where we feel like we can't talk about our desires, even with the people closest to us, or maybe even mm. especially with the people closest to us. And and I think that, that creates some tension in the relationship. If I were to get back to Ari's question here, maybe I, I would say, you know, at least in my own relationship, one thing that has helped us is uh, Bex will often pick a porn for us to watch. Mm-hmm. And, and so it often is the more sensual, sure. uh, woman directed, yep. uh, exactly what you were talking about earlier. And in doing that, it helps me better understand, You know, even though we have similar libidos, we obviously have different preferences. Mm-hmm. And it helps me understand her preferences, what works for her. And then communicating is really key. I can't tell you how many relationships I was in before this relationship. That, I communicated really well in every area except sex. Mm. And I, I'm not sure why that is. 
Mm. You two probably have a more honest connection and the fact that maybe women in the past felt like they wanted to put a porn on, but they didn't know how you would feel about it and then they overthought it and then they just refused to do it, uh -huh. right? Mm. She feels comfortable enough with you. That sets the stage. Mm -hmm. It shows you something different. It's a little bit of like even the bad music in the background of a porno. <laughs> it gets you kind of, it's just like, it's, it's a dry thing, right? It's not great music, but it gets you there. You might even not even be fully focused watching it. It's just mm. starting it and igniting that. Yeah maybe that conversation they didn't feel comfortable enough having people are very held back by being open and honest about their libido mm -hmm. and what they want for you the little shopping trips the little details the tiny things that's a kickstarter mm -hmm. i think the most important thing is not letting it go too long before you have the conversation you know yeah. people will say oh we haven't had sex in months okay well at what point did you decide to not go sit outside somewhere at a park and talk about it mm -hmm. shouldn't be something you can't talk about but get yeah. away from all your stuff I always tie nature in with communication because mm. I think sitting outside can really clear you of all the pressures in your home, your mail, your laundry, your stuff. Go sit outside at a park. Put your phones in the car. Talk about this. Let's yeah. get this ball rolling. That's, you love each other. Yeah. You want to touch each other. You don't want someone else touch you. You don't want to watch porn behind each other's back. Right. right. You want to do this together. So you have to really work at that. Yeah. yeah. I think there was a part in a uh, time in my first marriage mm. where... Um, things were just weren't working. We, we, we weren't compatible. She's a great person. It just didn't work out for us. And that did start happening where we weren't watching porn together. It was like, I'm going to watch this when you're not home. Yeah. Uh, Which is a huge failure. Right. Yeah. It, 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 huge failure. Absolutely mm. was. And, and instead of communicating, you know, Dan Savage calls it a former podcast guest of ours. He calls it GGG, good giving and game. When you're in a relationship, you, you want to be you know, good at whatever you're doing or trying to get better at it in order to please the other person. Uh, giving means you're not just receiving. That's often a, a problem, especially many men have is, uh, being the the receiver but never the giver mm. and and then of course game you're willing to do anything within reason sure mm -hmm. right and that's going to be different for each person reason can be way 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 over here for one person and but but being willing to sort of expand those boundaries together i found has really uh, our sex life now we've been together over five years it's way better than it was when it even started and that's the opposite from virtually any relationship i've ever been in. Actually, mm. it's definitely the opposite of any relationship I've been in. Mm. And and so it tends to wane over time in many relationships because you have that chemistry early on, right? There's the early chemistry, but then the rest of the relationship sort of you, you get comfortable and that chemistry. Complacent. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And so I think if anything, Ari, um, what you're looking for is that, that good giving and game of, helps you avoid that complacency, which is so important. All right, I'm going to send you a copy of our book, Everything That Remains. There's a chapter in there about how to screw up a relationship. <laughs> it's uh, a, the, the first love of my life. I really screwed up. And, we uh, all did. Right? right? <laughs> and, uh, and I wrote about the yeah. lessons I learned from that. So uh, it's a memoir called Everything That Remains. Uh, Ryan and I wrote it uh, a few years ago. And I feel like our... A podcast you'll like the audiobook version of everything that remains or if you want the book book or the ebook version happy to send those to you as well